Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, if we can look at the previous meeting minutes from 9-9, uh, nine -nine, and um, if someone after reviewing would like to make a motion to approve or comment, and B, um, Laura Costigan is signing on. Okay, hi Laura. I'll do a motion to approve minutes. Thank you, Francesca. Do we have a second? Hank and Jack tied. I don't, I'm not sure who had the faster hand. I'll remember that in a draw. Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack has the fa Jack, faster hand. Jack, you win, man. Trust me. All right, so it's Jack Hawkins, a second. Um, are there any changes? All in favor? Anyone opposed? That was all in favor, B. Gotcha, no thank you. Changes. Um, thank you. Um, the second item we have on the agenda is the, um, I think Tiger is on for the proposed Mead Park traffic island pollinator planting plan. Um, we um, spoke about this at our last meeting on 9-9 and you'll remember we did suggest to um, Chris Shipper to come back with another idea. Um, we weren't against it, we just didn't like the location as close to a mod um, concession as it was. So Tiger, if you wanna chime in here, go ahead. Uh, sure, thank you very much. Um, I think it was the, the sketch that we proposed was included in the, um, in the, in the agenda. Um, at least I'm hoping, since because I don't have a capability to share my screen. So yeah, after so last you. month, Thank you, B. After last month, um, when uh, that larger island um, it was decided that uh, we wouldn't necessarily put uh, a pollinator plantings on those or, or plantings that would attract stinging insects, um, I, I was down at the park the next day, took a look at that other island and thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to maybe utilize the, the traffic island that we have in the center there? Um, it's only about 100 yards away from the larger island um and it actually you know all the traffic coming in sees that island and uh it's it's not in the best shape you know it's just got one large tree in it uh bush and uh one rock that's dedicated to meat park baseball so uh i asked ron if she thought it would be a good idea I asked chris shipper um and well um you know he was disappointed about the first island they did the friends of bristow park did extend um, an offer to donate $2,000 towards the uh, plantings and work on this island. So I thought that was a very nice gesture by them to, uh, to do that. So I asked, um, oh, thanks, Rana. The, uh, so I asked um, Bill Pollock from Keith Simpson's Associates to uh, basically take what he had envisioned on the larger island and scale it down for the smaller islands. Um, and uh, he, did, he did just that. And so the thought is, um, as you can see in the planting plan, um, to kind of fill it um, pretty well with what's uh, with uh, pollinator plants. And then we'll take the, the large rock that's there and move that over to um, right behind the baseball uh, diamond, since there's an existing dedication rock there, we'll move this rock over there as well. So they'll be paired up and that'll free up a little bit more space on this island. And uh, we'll remove the existing shrub and plant it up. Um, we are considering work on the larger island. I don't have anything to speak of as of yet. Um, I had my town engineer look at that island with the possibility of utilizing it as a junction of um we in essence have uh two exits out of uh the lodge one by the staircase and one over on the other side um by the walkway that leads to the uh, disabled parking and if you join those two with uh, a line that um comes from the mead park uh playground the walkway to the mead park playground they all meet in the island so the thought is that we could have um that be a, a junction of the three crossings and I asked uh, uh, Bill Pollock again to give me a, a look as to what that would look like with maybe a picnic table and some plants that would just um, uh, just attract birds. 
uh, since that they're all, they're also a pollinator, but we wouldn't have stinging insects. And I'm waiting for that to come back, um, that plan to come back. But I think that that might be a way to kind of beautify that other island and have it be utilized as far as trying to help mitigate some of the the pedestrian traffic we have coming through the uh, through the through that parking lot, since uh, you know there isn't really any defined walkways. So um, when I get that plan, I'll bring that one back. But this one right now. As it stands, uh, we'd like to go forward with, and again, the Friends of Bristol Park will uh, give us $2,000 towards it, and then any additional costs will be uh, borne by the town. Are there any questions for Tiger? Um, Francesca, you wanna go first? Yes, thank you. Um, I think it's a great idea to put it in that second island um, further away from the food stuff. So I think that's a good idea. My question is, who's going to pay for the maintenance of the plants? Oh, I, I don't know how much maintenance they'll have, but that, that'll have to be taken care of by my department or, or my parks department. Okay. Uh, Tiger, this, this is Hank. Uh, one, of the original yeah. concern, one of the original concerns of the original island is that you know, we didn't want a place where, where kids were gonna be attracted to it because of the traffic in that area it will, mm -hmm. is that is that is that concern eliminated with this with this second island in, in your opinion yeah i think it's more of a beautification and uh and then you know a secondary aspect is that it you know will be for the pollinators i don't think that will attract kids over to it that's that wasn't the goal the goal was more you know to put in a pollinator island and to beautify this one area um not necessarily use it as a as an educational aspect, you know, or anything of that nature. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I don't see any. Uh, Carl, go ahead. Yeah. What What's the um, the plan for? Uh, I, I asked my um, was asked about maintenance, but what about watering? Um, how would it be watered, um, especially through a dry summer like the one we've just had? Is there, I know that there's existing or um, 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 done by the watering truck. Would this be included in that? Um, uh, it, would be in the, it would be in the short term. There was actually a water line that um, went out to that island because there was a water fountain on that island mm -hmm. at one point in time. We do have to relay the water line uh, for the lodge. And when we do that, my feeling was that I could tee off of that and put in a, uh, a small irrigation system in there. Won't take too many heads um, to have that done there. And then, it, then it'll take care of itself. Okay. Um, but that was the overall, that was the overall long-term goal. I, uh, go ahead, Jack. Uh, I was just looking on, uh, on Google maps. There, right now there's two trees there and there's one tree on the, uh, on the uh, diagram. Um, that's a, that's an old map. There's one tree's gone. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. What, 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 no problem. One of those trees was uh, was diseased and was removed. The, the further one in the back, unfortunately, um, okay. and that came about when we realigned the island. It was diseased. We realigned the island. If you look the, the on the Google map, that that one's probably a little skewed. So there's one in a bush right now. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I definitely agree, Tiger, that this will beautify that entryway and in addition prevent, you know, any kind of accidents of driving right into that island with, you know, more growth and happy to hear that what you're planting, you know, would continue that pollinator. So we are um, behind the cause. Um, are there any other, I've got a pretty good view of everybody. Is there anyone else who has a, Francesca, go ahead. I have a question, but I want to add for um, Hank, I guess it was, your concern about kids there. That is a really trafficked area, so that kids are not going to be walking across there. That's uh, um, there's no pathway, there's no crosswalk right there. Um, uh, we don't have to worry about that. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Very good point. All right. Um, if there's no other questions or comments, do I have a motion to approve the new pollinator location? Um, with an addition of the receipt of $2,000 and the rest of the cost on the town. Anyone like to make that motion? Sure. Francesca, thank you. And do I have a second? 
Jack again, lucky, lucky pair there tonight. Um, is there anyone opposed and all in favor? All right, um, that was unanimous um, B, in case you didn't see. And I do not see Jean Goodman on, just so you know, not yet B. So it looks like okay. everyone's seen. Thank um, you very much. Thank you, Tiger. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, next up, we have Aggie. I'm really excited to have Aggie on the call and look forward, uh, Ab Aggie, you can take over for the update on Lapham Center programming. Okay, well, Lapham Center has been very busy virtually. We started in March with about um, 12 weekly programs and in the summer we went up to about 20 and now we're doing 31 weekly programs, uh, classes. And we have about four monthly ones like book groups and things like that. And we also have 40 special events for September and October. Wow. Um, so we've been trying to keep people really, really busy. Um, from showing movies to doing, you know, um, bridge classes and, and teaching them Zoom and all sorts of things. Um, the next couple upcoming events we have is we have um, uh, the Zuckermans from New York City are doing a program called Murder and Mayhem. And it, it's, uh, it's on like not Halloween night, but the 29th. Um, and then we have the Connecticut Historical Society presenting a thing on that weird, all strange items from their museum. So, you, you know, they'll, hold, they'll show us what they are and explain it and have them guess what they, some of them are. Um, and then we have Jen coming from Copia to do a container gardening program. So that's this week coming up. Um, uh, we are collaborating with the Human Services Department and staying put. Um, they're working with us on some of those special events, and we just did a um, 180-person flu clinic uh, for seniors. Um, we did it through Sign Up Genius, and very safe. They got to come in pretty much one, on, one at a time, um, socially distanced from everybody, so they felt very safe coming in getting their flu shots, especially the ones who are afraid to go to the, uh, you know, Walgreens and, and um, uh, Costco or anything like that. Um, we are in conversations with um, the health department. Talked to Jen today uh, about the slow measured reopening of Lapham. Now that we hit phase three, um, we have to get the heat turned on. We're still waiting. They're almost, they're almost ready, but we're not quite there yet. Um, and then I will do programming uh, in person, um, one room, once a day to see if they're gonna start to come. They're afraid to come. So we'll see how many we get. We can use the dining, we're gonna use the dining room first because we have 10 tables in there that are six feet apart with one chair at each table. So the ones who cannot Zoom can come in and watch a Zoom. I can put it up on the big screen for them and they can at least not miss everything. Um, Cause we have a lot of them that don't have Wi-Fi. They don't know how to use a computer. They don't wanna know how to do it. They're afraid of it. So those guys, um, those are my first ones that I'm trying to get to come in. Um, some of them, I talked to one couple today and they have not literally left the house except for a walk. They have not gone to a grocery store. They have not gone to a, a doctor's appointment. They have not gone anywhere except for a walk and they pick and choose the times that they can walk. They make sure that it's a lot less people. They go very early in the morning. They're just terrified. So we have, we have that to deal with quite a lot. Um, we have weekly meetings at Lapham we, with meetups, which who, they've been meeting on the back porch, but now they're coming in. As long as I have enough room and there's enough space, they wear their masks the whole time. Um, we have um, the senior men are using the building. They're filming a dramatic read that's gonna be on channel 79. We have um, Medicare Part D is just starting. We have over 90 appointments that they've made, we've made so far on um, Sign Up Genius. They're gonna be remote appointments over the phone, um, but we, prob we will do some one-on-one -on -one in-person appointments for some people who cannot do this uh, on the computer at all. They can't, especially if they're new to us this year, which we do have quite a few new seniors. Um, they, they, they just can't do it. It's just an impossibility. They can't scan documents in and send it to us or 
um, it's just not going to happen. So we will, we have three counselors willing to do that. Sally Campbell being one of them when she gets back into town, she's going to um, be one of the persons that do in person Medicare D appointments. Normally we do 500 appointments. So um, I'm hoping we get close to that. We usually have about 100 appointments right now and we're almost there. So it's, it's pretty on track to, to um, fulfill that requirement and that need. This year, it's very important. Um, they're pushing like never before the advantage plans on seniors. Um, and for some reason, some of them are good, but they need to look at it and see what's best for them. And the counselors can help them do that. And, and the other thing is prescription drug plans. Some of the plans are doubling in price. So um, because they know this year people are afraid to come in, people are going to say, I'm just going to stick with what I've got, and they're going to just charge them more. So <laughs> that, that's very important that they check, check out their, um, their prescription drug plan with us. Um, and then on top of all that, we do, I do about seven to nine Zoom classes a day. And then I have, um, we do a bi-weekly email blast to all of them twice a week and then it repeats on Sunday so that they know what's going on. We send them fun stuff to do and then remind them of our upcoming programs. We get about 40, 50% open rate and about 20% or more click rate depending on, on what the programs are. The biggest program we had so far, we had 100 residents on, a, on one of the Zoom calls. Um, on, we did a program on Hamilton. They really liked that. So I have a couple um, upcoming new ideas that we're gonna do for um, November and December. We've, we're gonna do a drive-by, maybe cookie share. I don't know, we're, I'm working on it. This is one of the ideas we have for a Christmas party because we can't really do a Christmas party. Um, and then have them go home and we're gonna Zoom a program on the most famous Christmas lights at, at night. And so they can, they can have their dinner in front of them and we could toast the holidays and, and then we'll show them a, a program on Christmas lights. And um, we're hoping to get some more um, programs for November and December that we can do in person, in, in small groups. Um, and that's what's happening at Lapham. <laughs> So anybody have any questions? Well, Aggie, very impressive. I mean, really impressive. What you get done in that one building and the number of happy New Canaan residents is impressive, very impressive. I think that the creativity you, you use, yeah, bravo, to work around COVID, to work around you know people's limitations, whether it's Zoom or something else. So really hats off to you. I think everyone here shares the same sentiments. Um, anyone have a question or comment? Francesca, you're, um, yeah, on mute. Um, Aggie, I, I, I think the world of Aggie, she's amazing. She and Lynn there, are, uh, I take classes and um, they've all gone virtual and it's just been um, smooth sailing. It's been terrific. So my question for you, Aggie, is the, um, the gardening and, and stuff, the landscaping around the building, is there anything that needs uh, our attention? Well, the, the, um, the guys came and did a cleaning because um, I think they were forgetting about us <laughs> since we don't have that many people coming in um, and the weeds were taller than me. They came and um, cleaned those out. We do have a problem with the ivy in the bed right by my office. It's taken over. It's going to kill all the plants in there. It just is, it's just taken over. So if we can get some of that taken care of, that would be good. And we have two islands up at Lapham. Maybe they would want to make one of those a pollinator pathway. Hmm. Ah. We have two islands that have, one is just a giant stump and the other one has one tree in it and it's a big island. So maybe, I don't know. That big island would be perfect. I yeah, there's nothing there. I mean, Bristol, yeah. though. you don't have to do a lot of work. And I, I believe it might be watered. I think there's heads in there. Um, oh, and I forgot to tell you all that we also have um, Lapham's YouTube channel, which I put up special programmings and recordings go up on that. And also um, if, if everybody agrees. And we also have some classes that the residents cannot Zoom. So I record it and put it on YouTube and then they can watch it on YouTube. It's not like a live class because they're not there with their friends, but at least they get a chance to do their chair exercise or do their 
do their, um, you know, um, mostly it's the Qigong class that they can't kind of seem to figure it out. And, um, but um, we have that up on the YouTube channel for them to watch. And, and um, this is all new to me. I've, I had no idea how to do any of this stuff before COVID. So um, they, they seem to like that. Well done, Aggie. I uh, made a note to get with Todd and uh, John after to check out that IV. So thank yeah. you for that. We definitely will. And Hank, I'm sorry, you have a question. Go ahead. You're on mute. Um, Aggie, are, are, are you adequately staffed for this uh, COVID world? Are your people getting burnt out from all these programs or, or, or is that not a, not a uh, issue? Well, we, we are seeing Zoom fatigue. We definitely are seeing some Zoom fatigue. And I'm going to pull back a little bit before the weather gets bad. Um, and, um, once the weather gets bad, I did a program the other day and I've been getting like 12, 13 people and it was rainy and it was cold and we had 25 people hop on to watch it. So it really depends on the weather. If it's really nice, they're going outside, you know, to, to, to enjoy the weather and take their walks and stuff. But, um, uh, we do have a little zoom fatigue right now without too many people in the building, um, between Lynn and I and Stephanie. Um, who does 10 hours a week, and Lynn does about 15 to 19 hours a week. We're doing okay. If I have people come into the building, then we're going to have to we're going to have to have a talk about um, somebody making sure that they're wearing their mask, they're they're coming in. I think we do one room once a day. It's not a big deal. But once we get to the point where we have to open up more, I'm going to need I'm going to need some help. Um, but you know that that may not be until we get a vaccine, so. Thank you. Aggie, thank you again. Really impressive and appreciate everything you do. And we'll be in touch, um, Todd and John and I, to walk that IV area. Thank okay. you again. Thank you. Um, next up is the New Canaan softball proposal to plant new trees at Orchard Field to replace the trees that were moved. Um, Jeff, if you want to unmute, I think you're up next. Hey, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Fortman. Um, just a quick second background about myself. I'm a New Canaan resident and uh, my daughter is in eighth grade. She's 13 years old and has been playing softball at Orchard and, and Water Tower Fields for the last five years. I also have an eight year old in, in third grade. Uh, my, my wife is also a 14 year teacher over at West School. Um, but uh, if uh, anyone has noticed over the last couple of months, I don't know exactly when, the, the, the tree behind the backstop at Orchard Field came down. Um, that tree was beloved and I was at the field one uh, weekend recently and, you know, the idea came about and shared it with the, with the local softball community first of board members. Um, I also serve on the board as community relations and, spot, and, I, and I handle all the sponsorships for New Canaan Rec. And so um, the idea came, how can we help? How can New Canaan Rec help to replace that tree? How can my daughter and her teammates somehow may be involved in seeing this and one day have kids of her own one day and say, I planted that tree at Waveney. Um, and that's really the, the origin of the idea of it. And so, uh, the president of the board, Robin Biasati, um, invited uh, Steve Banco and John Howe into how can we be involved? What can we do? We met with John and Steve at the field. And the, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, B, I shared a document with you, but I might share a screen here. Um, I, have a, I have a rough sketch of it. Hold on one second. Uh, where did my screen go? Here it is. Uh, share screen. I don't know if you guys are seeing this right now. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so so one of the um, one of the softball members uh, players, her father owns Exterior Living Landscaping here in, in New Canaan. Um, he said he would absolutely help in uh, you know donating his time and machines and whatever. Um, I don't you know we'll get into the details and and Steve and John could possibly help, but. Um, here's what he presented as, and this was conversations with, with John and Steve and um, three, you know, the, the goal is shade the, um, in the summer and the spring season gets very hot and this will take time, obviously, but um, three trees that could flank the back of orchard field there. Um, and, and those could either be, sh you know, he gave me ideas of sugar maples or um, linden trees, diff different examples. And, and then 
the conversation got into, well, it is called Orchard Field. So maybe down the line, as you come up the, uh, come up the road of Waveney um, in the outfield to right field here, could we, could we plant some apple trees to create that orchard that, you know, gives, it, gives the field uh, that name? Um, and, and that's where we are right now. And that's why I, I, and I was invited to come and, and present this idea to you. I will say that um, I've had a lot of um, support from people that have heard the idea. And then furthermore, um, we, would be, we would run a fundraising program to, to support this. And it would be done through corporate and local business support, as well as family support um, of New Canaan players. Um, I play men's softball at the field. I'm, I'm pretty confident the men's softball players would contribute in some way. So there's an idea of getting sponsorships. We put a, um, actually there was a rock that was already placed because there was some work going on behind the um, backstop and there's an ability, it's got a perfect slanted, seal, uh, slanted um, face to put a plaque there. Um, you know, very um, aesthetically, please uh, look, look, of sponsors um, that will support this project. And then I, and maybe a standard, you know, GoFundMe. And, and the goal is to raise $5,000 to cover the expenses of this and where there, I, you know, I don't know where other um, coverage can come from, but I think that would, you know, that would do it un, unless there's other areas to, to find funds if it, if it doesn't. Um, and that's, and that's it. That's the, uh, that's the idea right now um, that I wanted to present to you guys. Um, and again, you know, it is uh, to, to see my daughter grow up in this town and to, to like the, the New Canaan Softball League is growing. The numbers are growing every year and, and it's sort of symbolic to plant trees and have them grow with them. That's great, Jeff. Thank you. Um, just on a side note, B, um, Jean Goodman joined us about 15 minutes ago. Um, and Jeff, questions. Um, in working with Todd and John and Steve, did you... Um, talk about the timing of the trees and when they would be installed, obviously the importance of them staying and maintaining and not dying. And then um, next question, were gator bags discussed, which are basically, if you don't know the bags that are at the base of the tree, you'll see Waveney Park Conservancy used them at the base of um, the new hill. Um, go ahead, I'll let you answer. Yeah, uh, the discussion was to the sooner the better, um, get them in this winter before, and, and it could go as long as, you know, depending on how the weather goes. I mean, you could plant these as long as late as December, early December, if the ground is right. Um, speaking to Brian Granzog, who is the exterior living landscaper, he, he agreed. So the goal is to get them in this season so the watering can happen and then they go dormant for the winter instead of versus waiting till the spring and then you really have to maintain them with a lot of watering. Um, get them in as soon as possible and, um, and go from there. Great, thank you. And then Todd and Steve, um, either of you comment on um, future costs for us for the trees? I mean, there really isn't other than, you know, making sure they're watered uh, when they're immature state. So anything we should worry about? Not right off the bat, I don't think. Great. You can tell our little prune in here and there, but they should be good. I don't have any, I don't have any concerns. No, Tiger, thank you. Steve, you're on mute. We do, have we do have irrigation on Orchard Field, so we, we, can, we can water the field, water the trees. Fantastic. Um, any other commission members, questions, comments? I mean, it seems like a pretty straightforward, amazing opportunity for us and to replace a tree that was gone. I'll look for any hands. Go ahead, Francesca. Sorry, but I, uh, help me out. Which one is Orchard Field? I'm <laughs> writing it in the chat, and uh, and nobody sees the chat. Yeah, Todd wrote back. It's the Varsity Girls Softball Field. I know. Is that the one next to Lapham? No, it's the it's the it's the one next to the bathroom building. It's, Thank uh, you, Carl. See it, um, Francesca, right there on the screen. So the uh, next to the towers. Gotcha. Okay. Thank Way you. to go, Carl. I'm gonna remember that handiness and quickness at the draw there too. That's excellent. Uh, it sounds um, like a great idea. All right, do we have a motion to approve the installation of these trees and uh, via the softball league? Anyone like to make a motion? Thank you, Hank. And do we have a second? Thank you, Laura. Anyone opposed? All in favor? That was unanimous, B. 
Once again, congrats, Jeff. Thank you. I'm assuming you work directly with Todd and John and uh, Steve. Great. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Up next, um, Steve, the uh, Rec Director's Report. All right, our fall programs, uh, we have a limit of our programs this fall because we don't have access to the schools, so we could not run our before and after school programs like we know we did. So we've got tennis clinics still going in Mead Park. Uh, we've been playing a little weather the last couple of days with a few rain, rain showers uh, camp, but we're, we'll, we'll, they'll go through the 3rd of November with tennis clinics. I mean, they've, they've been very popular. Uh, we have Mead Park and uh, uh, all the clinics are full, so that's really great. Uh, the paddle courts open for the season last last Saturday, the 3rd of October. Um, and, um, you know, we've got, we've got limited use of the lodge because of the COVID rules. So, uh, we've got it set. So with rules, so people can come in, they can, they can sign up with the attendant, go on and play the courts. They can use the bathrooms. Uh, if someone wants to stand in the porch and look out the window, they can, we had to take all the furniture off the porch. So, um, it's a similar pop, the similar with all the clubs are doing too. Some of the clubs have the same thing. They close their paddle huts. So they, their lodges are open only for bathrooms. So. We follow the same thing. And paddles starting to pick up. People are starting to play more as we're getting into the cooler weather. Um, we do are running some a, a series of guitar lessons. Uh, we can we have two two sessions, one at 3.30, one at 4.30, and um, we can bring four four students in at each time. To, and we're holding them at Waveney House, so that's part of our school program. Uh, we have a couple Halloween programs coming up. Uh, we're going to have a pumpkin painting uh, uh, activity on, on, uh, on Monday. And we've got it set up with three seatings, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30. And we're going to do it on the West Porch at Waveney. And uh, we can have 12, 12, uh, 12 children each time. So that, that'll be a total of 36 kids participating. And we've got a Halloween walk planned for Friday the 23rd. And we sold the first two sessions out. So we added an extra one. So we now have a session at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, oh, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And we have limited to 60 people per session. We've got... Uh, a lot of Halloween decorations, a lot, a lot of the inflatable Halloween uh, 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 things and, and, and some witches and different things. And so we've got it set up so the kids can come in costume. We can walk around the circle, look at all the, all the decorations, and uh, we'll have it set up. So at the end of the, at the, end of the, uh, the, end of the walk through, the, uh, I think B and Debbie and a few people are going to be there. We've, we've set up a, a kind of a tube type thing where they'll get, they'll get a treat sent down the tube to them they can pick it up. So um it, it's we, we've got a little a couple of spaces up to seven o'clock show i think but the four or five and six o'clock have sold out so well, that's pretty interesting um and we're working on some ideas for how do how do we do our, our sort of our winter pro our before school programs because we, we won't be able to use the schools this time and hopefully we'll get there sometime maybe in january but we'll see what happens there but uh uh we're also working on we, we had a very popular program which was a breakfast with santa so we're looking, we're working now to, to uh, come up with a way to have a, a drive-through where uh, we'll have Santa at the front of Waveney House under the port we'll share there, and families could drive through and and, uh, and see Santa. And uh, we won't be able to do pictures, but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out for that. Um, we started to do some put to put some of the things away for the season. We 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 put the cover in the pool last week, and the diving board stanchions are. Are 18 years old. They've been on the weather for 18 years, and we're starting to get some paint peeling and some corrosion. So uh, we, we we have a guy who serves our diving boards every year. He came out today, and they disassembled the the four stanchions for the two diving boards, and they're taking them back, and they're going to have them uh, they're going to have them sandblasted and uh, and repainted, powder coated, so they're going to have them back and reinstalled for the springtime. Um, we we the high school has been. Uh, Having some cross country, the high school uh, cross country teams have, have have had some practices, and they've had some uh, properly distance meets. Uh, they don't do a lot to have so many so many runners, like 25 runners. Uh, so they've they've had a couple of meets, and we're going to working with Jay uh, Egan and the FCAC. Uh, they want to do a, a modified uh, cross country championship where we'll have there's three they split the Fairfield County to three divisions: uh, an east, a central, and a, and a west, and uh, so what we'll do is probably have three separate meets and they'll probably do it with chips, computer chips. So the, they may have 25 runners in each meet, each, each meet. And then uh, with, with the computer timing, they can, they can put together the first place, second place, third place runners. Uh, so that'll probably take place on November 4th. We're still working out all the details on that. Um, several with Jim Gerwick doing his race this summer, we'll have, we'll have it spaced out where you, you have 
25 or 30 runners at the starting line, they're, they're, they're spaced out six feet apart. And the, that's what they're doing in the current races. It seems to work out very well. Um, we've had a couple meetings at Waveney House. Now the, the phase three has been uh, allowed. Uh, still being socially distanced, it's difficult. We, we had the Garden Pavilion meeting last week. They were they had Channel 79 who uh, broadcast it, but uh, we were only able to put 25 people inside the Grand Hall. Waveney, they're, they're socially distanced. You have to have six feet between chairs and six feet between rows. So we get 25 people in the room for a meeting. So it worked out pretty well. Um, Maggie mentioned flu shots. Uh, the town hall employee flu shots will be held at Lapham on Monday. And they'll probably have 75 or 80 people coming in for flu shots. Uh, she mentioned it's cold at Lapham. The boiler is being worked on. Uh, that should be completed by, by the end of the week, hopefully. And uh, they've also in the process of replacing the, the two boilers at the powerhouse and the boiler at the carriage boiler. And we've had some other work done. The, the Waveney Park and Service uh, very generously uh, put together a plan. They had a designer. I know Sally was involved with it. I think Carolyn Garrity's on the call. But uh, they took a lot of our landscaping had gotten overgrown in front of the house. And uh, uh, some have been damaged when they they, uh, when they put the roof on. They pressure washed the building. And some of the overspray killed some of the holly. So they removed all the, all the overgrown uh, landscaping from the front of the house. And they did a whole, whole new replanting. And it looks very nice. It's, uh, and it'll accent the house very nicely. So it, 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 it's going to be it's going to be a, a big improvement to the house and make it a lot better. Um, what else we got going on here? Um, that that's a that's about all I have to report on. We're again we're working on our winter programming. We should have something by by mid November as to what we can do where where we can do programs. But th that's a big challenge. Is, is we we normally have our before after school uh, uh, programs which are big. We hold them at each one of the elementary schools, but uh, because we cannot use the in, inside of the schools, um, it's difficult to, to try and transport kids to Waveney or someplace else and then back to, back to the uh, back to the school. So that's what we're working on right now. And Steve, I know that the umbrellas came down and off at the pool, the Waveney pool. Um, today I noticed Kiwanis, the umbrellas are still there. Is that something yeah, that'll come down? The umbrellas are gone. We took them down two weeks ago, three weeks ago. The, 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 the big, the, 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 uh, the stanchions are there. They don't, we don't take those down, but the the, the uh, camp the uh, the campus covers are off the umbrella. They're gone. Okay, thank so you. They were, they were down two weeks ago. Okay, super. Thank you for that report, Francesca. Um, Steve, I wonder if you can give us a status report on the pickleball situation. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Status report on the pickleball. Um, we. John is still, uh, Tiger and John are still working on, on, on getting that court resurfaced. The, the problem is with the, with the surfacing, it, it's uh, the sub base has, has collapsed in certain areas. And so the, the uh, uh, premier court surface is, is, is a mat type surface, which was laid down on top of the, of the asphalt. So there's spots where you have, it's like a trampoline. So it's not, it's not a good bouncing surface. So Tiger's working on trying to get uh, a final costs on what it would cost to, uh, to, to replace that surface and put and, put, and re, 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 repave or either repave the, the, the asphalt down or the problems here with tree roots coming through the asphalt that's broken the asphalt surface up so we may look at doing some of the post tension concrete so the tiger's working on that so what we're waiting for is to hear what it's going to cost and there's no plan of action right now i i, I quite frankly we, we have tiger, a you want to give an update tiger i see you unmuted thank you thank you we we have a cost estimate the, uh, the problem is that we don't have enough uh, funds um, currently allocated into that project. So we've got to ask the Board of Finance to move that money. Um, and we're, we're planning on doing that during the budget cycle to ask them to move that money and then uh, <clears throat> try to replenish our coffers for the, uh, for the remaining clay courts with the, with the hope of a, of a spring build um, for that work. The, the problem that we had is that the the, the original estimate, um, due to the fact that the, as Steve mentioned, the base was was poor, um, and and damaged by tree roots, it actually has to be taken out and a post tension concrete uh, subsurface installed, and that nearly uh, doubled the uh, construction costs. So at that point in time, we're we're faced with either putting all of the money towards pickleball, or um, and losing all the money for the clay courts or going back to the board of finance, asking for a transfer of monies into the, uh, into the pickleball and then asking for the, for the, 
uh, finances for the clay courts to be uh, um, be reinstated basically as a new budget item. And then we'll look to, uh, to a spring build. We have, uh, we have contractors that have, have provided quotes. We have, we have a kind of a scope of work that we would like to perform. And uh, it's now just uh, coming forward with a money issue. Okay, so I understand um, if that gets um, fixed with the uh, budget cycle, which is when, when, when is that cutoff date? We enter the budget cycle very shortly. The Board of Finance met last night and they'll be giving us their guidance, hopefully uh, by next month. And then we, you know, uh, we typically are, are in the budget cycle as far as capital planning now. Um, yeah, we typically answer that in uh, late September. <clears throat> so we're waiting for the Board of Finance guidance and then we'll go forward uh, with that, with the entire budget process. So what's your feeling that it will actually be addressed this spring? I feel pretty good about that. I just don't know. Uh, we might lose one for the other. That's my fear. I don't want to lose the clay courts for the pickleball or lose the pickleball. So it's that um, much. Can you can can you tell us how much it is? Uh, I'm not. Off the, I apologize. Not off the top of my head. I I provided that previously, and, and I could send that to you uh, tomorrow morning. But the uh, the original thought was we had, I believe it was one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and we split it down the, close to down the middle between the two, and uh, we're going to need almost all of it to do pickleball. Uh, and then that'll encompass also the uh, backboard. <laughs> the practice area, yeah, no. the backboard and the practice area. We'll put that all at one grade. Right now it's at two separate grades to step yeah. down. We'll put that all at one grade so you'll actually have the backboard and pickleball courts all together um, at, at one at one elevation. At about uh, with new, new fencing. Excuse me? At about three hundred and fifty thousand, you're saying? No, 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 no. It'll be close to one hundred and eighty, but then we're at that point in time, we'll have exhausted all of the monies that were associated for the clay courts, and we still need to refurbish the clay courts. So, in essence, it's a it's an additional add of around one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Sounds like maybe we should see if there are people who uh, want to raise funds for the pickleball. Anyway, thank you. For yeah, that would be fantastic if you could do that. No, you're welcome. Thank um, you for the update, Tiger. And you're welcome. Another question. Uh, Dixon Park was supposed to have a path going through it. Is that happening? It's all done. The, path is, the, the base of the path is in. Steve had met with a contractor. Sorry, Steve. No, it's, yeah, uh, it's, all, it's all completed. They did a very nice job. It's all been paid. Yeah. It's really nice. Looks right. great. I by there today and didn't see it. Great. <laughs> okay, good, good news. Thank you. Steve, thank you for your update, and Tiger also for the update on pickle uh, pickleball. We'll wait to see where that goes in the next uh, 30 days and give everyone an update at next month's meeting. Um, any other questions for Steve? Thank you, everyone. Um, Todd, I think you're here tonight to give an update on parks. I know that um, John Howe is out. You're up. I'm here. All right, so we've um, cut back along the Mead uh, Park Pond, if anybody's noticed. And when you first pull down the driveway all to the right of it, it's all cleared out like the poison ivy and the shrubs and all that stuff is all cleared. So you get a nice view of the pond now. Uh, we're also cutting back along the trails at Kiwanis and Waveney, which we've done along the walking pass. We haven't done Irwin yet because we're waiting for the first frost, which we talked about last month. Uh, let's see. Um, we did hang two new um, maps for the trails up at Waveney in the two corners of the lots. I don't know if anybody noticed, but they're ones in the first lot when you come up the hill. And then when you go down towards the Waveney house, it's in the uh, other corner parking lot. And those two, um, I should just interject and let you know, those two were provided by the Waveney Park Conservancy with the design and approval. And they look great. If you have not seen them, I highly recommend you uh, check them out. And then the last thing, we've been getting a lot of complaints about garbage and the dog poop bags up at Waveney. Uh, near the trails and the Jenny and Meadow. I think Rhonda has a picture to share with us. I do. I'm looking for it right now. One sec. Of course, it's not letting me share. Let's try another way. One sec. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. 
So this is one location, if you guys can see that. This is a long, it's uh, in the middle meadow after you come down the hill when you cut across um, the meadow. And this was um, a gator that was attached to a tree. A gator bag is tied to that. And people have just taken upon leaving the trash there. I, I definitely agree with Todd. This is something that came up at Waveney Park Conservancy meeting um, last night with uh, Tiger and myself. And you know, if, if, you know, now that we have channel 79 and we have Michael Dynan on, you know, this is absolutely an outcry for the residents of New Canaan to really understand the carry in and carry out of a park that is getting more use um, than it ever has. And I think um, we're extremely lucky to have such beautiful facilities and to see them treated in such a manner is beyond disturbing. So I would just reiterate that this is the time with the use and the maintain and all the money and effort and sweat that goes into these parks to make them beautiful and for everyone that people are reminded to take their trash with them just as most parks are like we will um tiger and i plan to meet with steve and john and todd and and work on additional signage in the park that reminds people as they get out of their cars that it is a carry in and carry out. And obviously I think everyone knows there are dumpsters in the parks, both near the Paddle Hut, both near the Waveney House, both near the Mead Park Concession and at Irwin. So I would just really um, um, demand that people start carrying in and carrying out. This is not how the park should be used. So Todd, I think you have the same feeling. And there's one more spot by Lapham Road in the trail over by the mulch site. They like to leave a bag full of trash and dog poop bags also. Jack, go ahead, man. Yes. Um, so, I mean, my wife, so I've brought this up, uh, you know, several times, actually. <laughs> um, and, and we've discussed, you know, the carry in, carry out versus having a trash can there. I understand um, both arguments, both sides. Um, my wife and I were there very very frequently at least at least three times a week and um we've kind of started making it a routine and if you look at how many people are there especially with covid i mean it's uh there are a lot of people at the park there with their kids and all that a lot of people um but uh, we've started bringing trash bags and uh starting to walk around and pick up uh which is good and bad <laughs> i mean um i mean again um there's a lot of trash there and, uh, you know, trying to be tactful here, you know, I, I also bring up the resources that we spend at Qantas Park, the, uh, the, the, uh, the lifeguards and all that that we have there. Maybe we should reallocate some extra time to uh, occasionally going over to, uh, to the park there and walking through there and, and cleaning it up um, because we, we filled up over a trash bag in a half of trash. I mean, um, there's a lot of trash there, but there's also parents there. There's mothers there who are trying to watch their kids who have their hands full, you know, and not, I'm not um, excusing anybody leaving trash, but I am saying, you know, when you have a couple of kids running wild, it's easy to forget something, you know. <laughs> so uh, if we could have somebody walk through there once in a while uh, to clean up, that would help. Rana, yeah, go know, ahead. With Jack mentioned with COVID, it, what happened with COVID was basically all the towns in Fairfield County closed all their parks and facilities. And Waveney Park was probably the first park to reopen in this, in this area of the state. And what's happened, we have a lot of people coming to Waveney now, and we have become Fairfield County Park. Uh, and a lot of people, I, I, I would guess uh, between 50 and 60% of the people that come to Waveney now do not reside in the Canaan. A big percentage. I think, the, I think there are more non-residents come to the park than are residents. Um, uh, and uh, I think a lot of them don't really care about taking care of our park. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I talk to the people there. I, I don't think anybody, everybody likes the park. And, uh, but I agree. I mean, I would even bump up your numbers. There are a lot of people there. A lot of people there. Yeah. Um, I think even if you go back, Jack, to March of 19 and you look at the Greenwich Times article that was about Todd's point and their carry in and carry out also, the volunteers March of 19 took out 1,500 pounds of trash. So I think it seems to be a common issue, but I think there's a way to, 
to, to combat it. One is making sure the signs are there and getting the word out. And then you're right, maybe there's a volunteer combined with an employee initiative. I know that John and Steve and the crew, their time is tight, but it's something we have to focus on now. And it's Again, you know, if, we're, if we're spending the resources for lifeguards at Qantas when nobody's using it, maybe instead we should reallocate those resources or resources to, uh, to occasionally, occasionally walking through and cleaning yeah, maybe, it up. And of course, the signs. that's something we decide. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's an idea. Caroline, go ahead. Sorry, I see your hand up. Yes, hi. Um, I, I know you mentioned, we talked about this at the meeting last night. So um, we also talked to our major donor of the Jenny and Meadow today, and they're very upset about all these uh, dog bags being left there. So uh, we did a little research today and are thinking of the Conservancy trying a six month um, trial of this thing called Doggy Pot, where we will pay for this company to come in and empty these um, receptacles twice a week. Um, we will have four of them, one, uh, two near the meadow, one near the pond, and one up by the parking lot by the wall garden. I, as, you know, we're just, we got the pricing. It wasn't bad. And just to see if it works, because it is really unsightly. And we, the, the donor said, maybe we should ban dogs for a week from the park, and maybe that would make people uh <laughs> awaken to the problem yeah i would um, hate to see that happen especially yeah, I know, I know, you know, I know. Conservancy doesn't have the entire park they have a part of the park but i certainly think the effort and the fact that jenny and meadow and so much money and time and effort has been put into beautifying that mm -hmm. to see those bags is like i said disturbing so, so. Uh, i what we would like to do is try to we'll, we'll do maybe a presentation next month and see what you all think and uh, very generous be a possibility. Yep, look forward to it. That's very generous and a great idea. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, um, everyone, for your updates. Jack, for your comments, and Steve for the update. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, next up on the agenda is the chairman's report. Um, part of the report I was going to bring up tonight is the trash. So I think we covered that. Thank you very much, everyone, for bringing that up. I hope it definitely makes the paper and the news. Um, but more importantly, a happy note. We are here tonight, um, and I know that Sally, the former chair of Parks and Rec, is on the Zoom with us. I know Francesca is on, and you know I would like to just start by saying um, uh, thank you to Doug for being on Parks and Rec for eight years, and I know that this is his last Park and Rec meeting, and all of us are anxious to um, you know wish him luck. So I think uh, if I can, as my chairman's report, I'd like to just hand off to Sally who's worked with Doug for many, many years. And Doug, I know you're on. So Sally, go ahead, you got the mic. Okay, um, hi everyone. Um, so good to see everybody. Um, Doug, it's hard to believe that after 25 plus years, you're leaving New Canaan. Um, and I just wanna thank you for your involvement over the years as a coach, youth coach in many sports, member of the New Canaan Lacrosse Board, and for serving eight plus years on Parks and Rec. And uh, you're leaving New Canaan a better place because of your involvement. While we served together for eight plus years, um, I always, always appreciated your thoughtful and measured approach to issues. And you um, could always be counted to pull the commission back to the core issue when you know, people got a bit off track, which we're all guilty of. And you're a big believer in that we could all agree to disagree. And also that civil words solve problems. And I always appreciated when you weighed in on, on issues. Um, behind the scenes, for a lot of you, you don't know, Doug was incredibly helpful and quietly forceful, on, um, especially on the pool committee. And fortunately for our pool pass holders, many improvements, improvements happened under his watch. Additionally, um, Doug was so involved in youth sports as a coach and a board member. That made him a very effective liaison to the Nicanian Athletic Foundation. And um, I think everybody appreciates your efforts there. Doug, I'm, not, I'm really excited for the next chapter in your life. Thanks for all you've given to New Canaan, and I will really miss you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sally. Bravo, Francesca. Well, Sally covered pretty much <laughs> all of it, except that uh, your, your departure is our loss, Doug. This is really a bummer that you're leaving us and it's been great having you. Always uh, hand up volunteering to help um, with whoever needed help on the commission and, uh, and your knowledge of the New Canaan Youth Sports um, was a background that was really helpful on the commission too. So thank you. Anybody else, if uh, show of hands would like to speak, please chime in. Um, Doug, I really wish you lots of luck that next um, stage of life and new venue and uh, I'm sure the house is all packed up and again, hats off to you for the many years of uh, dedication to New Canaan in many ways. Thank you very, very much. Um, last point of the evening is uh, one more thing on trash. Sorry to beat um, this topic, but I just want to mention Mead Park Playground has been an issue with trash also. So it's not just um, Waveney and Irwin. Um, and lastly, um, next month we'll, we will have uh, Caroline coming back, as she mentioned, for the uh, trash presentation. We will also have um, an update from the Nature Center. Um, so excited for that. Um, and if there are no other topics, and I see no hands, do we have a motion to end our meeting? Doug, would you like to do that? Oh, you're on mute, Doug, just unmute. Hang on one second, I'll wait till you're unmuted. You'll touch your iPad and take the line off. Technology, I know. I'll try to unmute you. I know, Pam, maybe you can un, wait, let's see. Can you unmute um, Doug? Thank you, Doug, you're open now. Go ahead. Okay, I, let's close this meeting and go out and have a drink. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Anyone second that? Hank, I saw your hand come up. Everyone in favor and nice wave to Doug. Best of luck. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Everyone. Thank you. Good Take luck, Doug. Good night, all. Thanks. Bye, Bye. Doug. Good luck. Thanks, B. Take care, everybody. Bye, B.